it's time for a second follow-up video on the Game Boy Operator from Epilogue. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, we're back with the GB Operator and this is from Epilogue. We've done a video on this already. I will put a link right up there for you to check out if you have not already watched the full comprehensive uh, video. But I've got a whole bunch of new toys to play with, some new things to put the Epilogue's GB Operator through, and I thought we would do it together right here on this video. So before we get started, of course, uh, take an opportunity to subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you be one of our regular watchers, or regular followers, and of course like the video, and check the little notification bell. All right, now that we've got the housekeeping out of the way, let's take a look. So as you can see up on the screen now, we have the Epilogue Operator beta software. This is the same stuff that you can download right now. And uh, we're not going to go through all of the original functionalities and features of the uh, GB Operator software and the emulator, but rather we're going to look at some new stuff to try to keep this video just a little bit shorter. So we have here... Um, a couple of interesting cartridges sent by my friend Chris Henschel. He sent us this very, very old flash cartridge called Dr. GB Card. This is from Bung Enterprises Limited, 16 a megabyte or megabit, not sure on that one. But this is a one time, a one game reusable flash cartridge. He said he's had some problems with it in the past, but he sent it along anyway that maybe we could plug this in and see if and what even the GB Operator software sees it as. And we also have, uh, as a follow-up bonus, we have a 125-in-1 game mega cart. So these are very, very popular, so you don't have to carry a whole bunch of Game Boy cartridges around with you. Technically, these are pirated cartridges, and I'm hoping that when I stick this inside the GB Operator, I'm going to actually see that this is indeed an unofficial bootleg cartridge, because that's, I mean, nobody should believe that this is an, an actual official cartridge, but um, one of the things that I really wanted to test with this GB Operator was how it performed as a bootleg card detection package. So we're going to look at these two first, and then we're going to move on to the Game Boy Camera. And the Game Boy Camera, of course, is a very small, low-resolution, black and white, it's like a 128 by 116 pixel um, black and white camera for the Game Boy. We're going to use it in this Game Boy Advance here. And we're going to see what we can do with this thing with regards to the GB operator. Can we take pictures? Can we dump pictures? What can we do? So we'll take a look at that as well. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to go ahead and insert this GB card, this flash card, and let's flip over to the screen, and we got nothing. I mean, not even a, I don't know what this is, just like nothing even got inserted in here. The pins are all clean. Pop that guy in again, and we still have nothing. Okay. Well, he did say there were problems with it, uh, that he had had problems in the past with it, so I'm guessing that maybe it's, it's, just, it's just plain dead. So let's try to plug it into an actual machine. You can see there's some nonsense going on down there. And um, we have nothing. So maybe this cartridge is just bad, um, or maybe it's been corrupted. Hard to say. Well, sort of a failed test on this part, but you know, that's okay. That was just sort of a bonus he sent along. I thought that'd be kind of fun to take a look at. Now let's take a look at this guy. So this is a 125 in one. Is this 125 or 128? Hard to say. Let me get it nice and close for you. Anyway, multiple games on a single cartridge. So let's go ahead and pop it into... I'm going to get hollered at because my fingerprints are all over this screen. But if we, uh, if we pop in here, you can see we have a list of games. And uh, Miner 2049er, one of my favorite games from the old Commodore 64 days. And this does seem to be booting. And the game does come up. All right. There we go. This is what it looks like on real hardware. Let me get a little closer for you. Sorry about the fingerprints. I'm sure I'll get hollered at. All right, so you get the idea. All right, and then I think uh, I think if you want to go back, oh, there's some stretchy stuff too. You can actually stretch the screen. I don't know if that's a function of the cartridge or what. Most of the time, there's like a four-button salute or six-button salute or something you can get back. I don't know how that works, but we know that the cartridge works, so that's good. All right, let's plug it in here. And what we have now is unknown title 
Currently connected, unknown title, no picture, but unfortunately it does read as an official cartridge. Now, I would think that that would show up as some sort of a bootleg cartridge, but maybe that's not how it works, and I'll reach out to Epilogue to find out more. The real question is, is will it launch? Let's take a look. Ah, integrity check failed. We were unable to confirm the integrity of this cartridge. Would you still like to proceed? The game may not play properly. You can try cleaning and reinserting the cartridge if you like. Well, let's go ahead and try it anyway. Well, that's a good, it's 120 in one, it looks like, according to the menu. And uh, let's, um, let's go back down to minor 2049er. Hit start, and we got uh, I got nothing. All right, let's uh, go again. Once again, the integrity check failed. Let's try one of these Pokemon games. No. All right, so it looks like the Mega Cartridge is a bust. We'll give it. We'll try a couple more games um, just to make sure. But let's. Uh, well, there's paper boy. Let's try that. Yeah. And I do know that Epilogue is interested in making this a fully legal solution. So maybe there has something to do with, maybe they're physically blocking this cartridge from, from actually working at all. Uh, maybe it's using some sort of weird bank switching that's unsupported, or they have purposefully turned it off to avoid any sort of um, software piracy. That's okay. So that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get this guy out the door. So that was fun. It was nice of um, uh, Chris Henschel to loan us these guys to check out. So we'll put those guys aside, and that leaves us a couple more goodies left to look at. We're going to start with the Game Boy camera. Now, I was out of the Game Boy scene about the time that the camera came out, so I, I am not even really familiar how this operates. I plugged it in earlier to make sure that it worked, and I got a, I got a picture on it. But we'll go through the, uh, the ritual yet again with another picture. But I'm going to show you how it looks plugged into the GB operator first. So we're going to plug the guy in. And if we go over to the screen, hey, look at this. It, it definitely identifies it as a Game Boy camera. It is an official cartridge, and it is Super Game Boy Enhanced. Hmm, okay. Uh, but there is no way to launch it. Hmm. So it would be really cool if I could actually take a picture from here, but uh, I don't think that that's going to be possible. We'll go over to the Data tab, and there we can download the game. I wonder what that would actually do. So let's go ahead and save it to the desktop here. It's doing something. It's dumping something. Uh, okay, so we can download the save file and upload the save file. So let's download the save file. And again, we're going to back it up to the same location as a save file. Okay. So now what we really need to do to see how well this works is to take this camera out, put it inside of an actual Game Boy, and wipe out the photos. However, you'll notice, speaking of photos, this tab is now lit. Look at this, Game Boy Camera Gallery. Transfer pics from your Game Boy camera to your PC in just two clicks. The images are stored as PNG of 128 by 112 pixels. If you'd like to easily remove all the pictures from your camera without having to manually delete them one at a time, you can use the delete button below. Well. Awesome. All right, so we have, a, we have a backup of the data. We should be able to restore it. And you can see down here, you can even see the pictures. And unfortunately, that's as big as they get. <laughs> so there's some pictures of my buddy Chris and some things that he took pictures of. And yep, there's that guy. There's me right down there. But we'll, go, we'll, uh, we'll look at this more in a minute. We're going to go ahead and hit delete all. Well, I've already done a save all, by the way. I did that off camera. But let's do a delete all. Yes, yes, yes. It will permanently delete these. And they are gone. No photos found. So let's go back to our data, upload a save, and we'll get our save file. All right, and back to photos, and they're all back. Awesome. All right, let's delete them all again. And again, there's really no way to play from here. So let's go ahead and take this guy out. I will put this inside of my Dirty screen Game Boy Advance. All right, and it definitely runs here, but it does not. There we go. All right, and so uh, you can view, shoot, or play. I'm not sure what play it is. I think it does like a, a screen, a slideshow. All right, let's shoot. 
Okay, and there we are. Hey, there's my camera and there's me. How nice. A picture of, hey, hey man, it's a picture of a, of a camera. That's like art or something, man. So let's take that picture. You can adjust the contrast, adjust the brightness. All right. Say cheese. All right. So we got a picture. We save it. We have 29 left. So it holds 30 pictures on this cartridge. All right. Cool. Let's shut this guy off. Pull it back out. Plug it back in. Go to our photos. There it is right there. I will save all. And I will once again save into my backups folder. And I now have a copy of it. All right, cool. I was going to show you guys what this looked like. And I now have a copy of my photo. So there you go. So the Game Boy camera, um, now I, again, I am not a big Game Boy camera fan, but from those I have spoken with, this is a really big deal. Being able to even delete all and save all into PNG formats, do data backups of this camera cartridge, this is a, this is a big deal to a lot of people. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited that this worked out as well as it did. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give him back. I'm going to send his camera back to him in the condition it came in. I'm going to go ahead and restore his camera. And go back to photos, make sure they're all there, and they are. All right, well, that was a successful run. So listen, um, the ultimate, uh, the GB operator, the ultimate Game Boy camera accessory? Maybe so. All right. So I do have a couple of other interesting titles here. So one of the questions I had after my last video was, does this thing actually do Super Game Boy enhanced stuff? And so I only had the one cartridge. Now I've got a couple of other ones that are definitely um, Game Boy Color or Super Game Boy enhanced titles. So now we're going to look at both of these and see if indeed they do something special when using the GB operator. So let's go ahead and we'll look at Donkey Kong first. We got nothing. All right, let's eject it, plug it back in. Uh-oh. I'm going to blow on it, tap it a little bit. We still go, oh, there we go. All right, well, listen, these things are finicky. What do you want? All right, so um, we have here, we have Super Donkey Kong Game Boy Japan SGB Enhanced. So let's see what this actually looks like when we launch her up. Okay, definitely looks uh, of the color variety. Again, I'm going to just run the, um, the audio through my, my mic. It's not too loud. All right, cool. Well, it's definitely color. That's something. I'm not seeing any sort of borders or anything, though. All right. All right, well, it definitely plays. I was never a big fan of these games myself. I'm, I'm down for a good platformer, but... Uh, I don't know. These have never really done anything for me personally. It's nice of him to send them over. Oh. Oops. Well, I guess I probably should have held on to that. Whatever. No, oh, what? Whatever. All right. Well, you can definitely see what it looks like now. I'll we'll play for another moment here. Get a little music action. Hopefully, I won't get a copyright hit here. All right, well, there you go. Okay, and once again, as you saw before, it's trying to um, uh, it's trying to write the save data back. I'm gonna go ahead and discard it because it's not my cartridge. All right, so uh, no Super Game Boy enhancements really going on there. Let's try Galaga, Arcade Classics number three, Galaga and Galaxian. All right, here we go. Namco Arcade Classics. Well, it looks great. Color. Galaga it is. Get that volume down a little bit. All right, there we go. You know, like for a Game Boy game, this is actually pretty impressive. <laughs> Be honest with you. 
This is pretty neat. And it's got the colors, and it, it, the, sh the ships actually look like the ships. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. The sounds are like dead on too, which is great. All right, I'm the hang of this. So if we were expecting to see graphic arts on the side or anything like that, I'm afraid that's just not the case. But it is running as if it were a Game Boy Color. And even that alone is still pretty cool. All right. Pretty cool. So another, another game down. So I'd like to finish up this video. We'll keep this short. There's not much to show. My, my other video, um, quite frankly, I had a, uh, a good deal of um, coverage of this device in my last video, a, a full hour almost. But I did want to take a moment to, um, to pay some homage here to what apparently is one of the most ambitious and amazing Game Boy Color games ever. Now listen, I'm a huge Dragon's Lair fan, and I'll put a video up to my, um, my Dragon's Lair video where I show you the, uh, the 1 16th arcade replica from Replicade. Big fan, huge fan of Dragon's Lair. Played it a million times. I've even worked on a conversion of Dragon's Lair for the Nintendo DS. Uh, so I've, I've um, I, I reached out and got a copy of this guy, and I'm really excited to look at it with you. Again, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Dragon's Lair, and I'm dying to see what they managed to eke out on this Game Boy Color. The videos I've seen of it look amazing, but the proof is in the play. Let's take a look. Don Bluth. Don Bluth's birthday was earlier this week. Happy birthday, Don. All right. Oh, extra languages, too. All right. I'm seeing what kind of attract mode we have here. Okay. So it's, it's, it's what they got. Listen, this is okay. This is cool. Heavy dithering, right? That's what they uh, ended up doing. Credits, intro. I'm assuming that's intro is what we just saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What about credits? Yes. Very cool. All right, let's get on with the fun. Uh, so there's a tutorial of some sort. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the tutorial. I already know how to play Dragon Slayer, but just for fun. Okay. Okay, so wh where was my tutorial? I died. Hmm, did I not select tutorial? All right, hang on, quit. Something tells me I did not choose the tutorial. Start. Tutorial. Hmm. Nope. It's like I'm playing the game. What am I missing here? There's something wrong with the emulator, maybe? I don't know. Maybe tutorial gives you endless lives or something. I can consult the manual. All right, here we go. Sword. So this was all based on a quick time, quick time motion. You're not actually controlling the character. You just tap a button to keep the action going. All right, not bad. Horse. You know, it really, nope, not fast enough on the sword. Yeah, so it's all about timing, right? Uh, knowing the moves and doing it at the right time, and obviously the timing here is considerably different. A little spawn animation, they got that, okay. It's amazing how much they actually pulled off. I mean, this, is, this scene isn't even in, I think, some of the home versions I've seen, this one. This is one of those sort of Lesser seen scenes. Hmm. It's interesting. There's a mix of digital audio clips as well as uh, sound effects. Normally you would go just as, his, as he dips down and his front knee disappears. Boom. That seemed to be the same. 
Nice job. Sword. Back. Good. Oh, whoop, what happened there? That's not quite right. All right, well, that's okay. I know the room. Interesting interesting combo there. See, this is another one of those optional ones that rarely... Some, whoop, whoop, guess I should stop talking. This is still really impressive. I mean, this is, like, amazing for a Game Boy color cartridge. I mean, this is just crazy. Yeah, just like the laser disc, you have to get the timing down. This used this was a laser disc game originally. Interesting. Game over. Well, that's still pretty neat, folks. Um, so let's take a look here real quick. I actually have the manual for this guy uh, that came with it. I'm really curious as to what the uh, difference in mode was. Main menu or tutorial. Mm-hmm. Keep the connections dry. Dirt the daring. Use weapon. How to play. You'll get to play through the first few scenes with visual hints on the lower left corner as to when to move and what move to make. Okay. All right. Well, let's take another look here. All right. So I'm looking. There should be a sword here somewhere. Oh, there it is. There's your tutorial right there. All right, cool. Should be right. Yep. Nice, okay. I don't know how I missed that the first time. I like that they only do it for the first few scenes. A lot of the home versions leave that indicator on the whole time. And yeah, cheat. I could probably sit and do an absolute whole show just about this conversion alone. At the Whirlpools. It really drives home the importance of audio and music inside of game development. Because while this plays very faithfully and in many ways even looks very faithful, the, the piece that does not work is the audio, you know? You can get the balls and everything. So obviously we can't consider this a direct port of the arcade game, right? I mean, bonk. But it's it's the best you can do. It's certainly better than, say, the Commodore 64 version uh, or the ColecoVision version. This is a lot closer. But if you... Oh, training complete. So I guess your um, fun time is over. Oh, that's it. So you only get to play the first few. All right, listen, we could do this all day long. Uh, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at uh, some follow-up stuff with the GB Operator. They are currently taking orders for these guys for delivery in um, December, I believe. I believe orders are still open. We have not seen a new drop of software yet, so we're still on the same launch uh, emulation software. Other than that, I have nothing new to report. Please like the video, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do. Thanks always so much for watching. I'm Shane Armonroe, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.